Welcome everyone. Welcome to Association Chat. This is your weekly chat, your weekly place to talk about all kinds of topics, your topics du jour in the association world. And I am your host, Kiki Letalien, and I see that we have Eric joining us. Hi, Eric. All right. A little bit of a, I think we're good with sound. Um, Can you hear me we, okay? Yes. We are talking about personal brands in the association industry uh, this week. That is our focus. And it's definitely, I think, an important focus because there's a lot of, you know, there are a lot of different feelings about personal branding. And, you know, some people really, you know, they have this this bad reaction to uh, the, the term personal branding. They think it's, it's selfish or they think that it is um, sort of lessens that that human aspect of what we are and, and sort of makes us more um, like we're material goods and not like we're ourselves. And then there's this very real aspect of it where, you know, with social media, with, you know, the need to have an online presence of some sort to establish that you are human, um, what does that do for you? You know, how can you use that? How can you optimize that in your life? So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking a little bit about, um, you know, what the problems can be, what the challenges are, um, when your brand might be more, uh, more visible than your organization or your association's brand. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? You know, what are the challenges and what can we do? to um, optimize the, the personal brands that we have. So with that said, Ray, I'm so glad to see you. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad to see so many of you here. Um, you know, I wanna start out with, with the primary question. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up to all of our uh, audience. And it's going to be so. Do you think it's important to develop your personal brand? Why or why not? And just a quick reminder to everyone who is joining us for the first time. Um, if you want to type your questions into the side, you can do a little backslash Q and then your question and it will pop up with this little Q next to it and we can answer it and bring it up on the screen. You can participate in chat over on the side, and you can also join in an open seat if you want to talk with us directly and join in the conversation that way. Please do so. We, we, we uh, uh, Kiki really appreciates it when when I'm I'm not the only other face on here. <laughs> so, so Kiki, thank you so much. I was having a little bit of trouble getting on this uh, uh, this uh, this afternoon, but uh, the, the the for many years. Uh, 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 my family worked in a business, and their their personal their brand was not their 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 name. They mm -hmm. they did not have they, but but many people knew them them as the uh, a, a specific kind of uh, of of small business here in the in the Washington D.C. area. But their 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 name was. Professional exhibits and graphic services, and it got to the place where it was no longer that anymore. It was it was the acronym PEGS to the point where it was PEGS, and everybody would call up their 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 company and ask for um can can I please speak to PEG, and PEG <laughs> was not there's nobody named PEG within the within the business, so I think that that one of the things that that taught uh, taught me and also taught taught the uh, the folks who were close to us uh, was that it's important to to, to express to, to people what the name actually means. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this this goes with all of the the myriad of a acronyms that that are within the association space. Uh, AARP doesn't even mean the uh, the American Association of Retired Persons anymore. It, it's just a it's a it, it's IBM. It's it, it doesn't which doesn't mean uh, international business machines anymore. The the focus for us uh, as as people within a sector that is highly network focused, the uh, 
the associations themselves are our networks. Mm -hmm. What we need to understand is that is that there is that 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 combination of of personal brand and and company slash association brand. Uh, uh, the, the and and I think that Kiki, you've probably experienced this as well with with the transitions that you've made, where your personal brand was the face of, for, for a lot of folks within within uh, your space of uh, of your past uh, uh, places where you've worked so um, what do you when you look at, at your at, at your past how do you, when, have you, have you seen that that connection that I'm speaking of where you have uh, your name your your face being the, the the real deep connection that most people have with uh, with a company well, you know, um, I don't want to talk too much about myself here, but um, I think we'll see the the numbers drop of of the audience. But, but um, I think that you know, just really quickly, um, I I definitely think people buy into uh, wanting to connect with a human, and I think that if they know your brand and they trust what you say and they like who you are then they're going to respond more positively to, um, you know, whatever company or organization that you're connected to, even if, even if they didn't have any sort of um, connection to that company before. When I think about personal branding, I think about um, people like, you know, people who really are brands, which, you know, you look at people like uh, Richard Branson, who it's like with or without Virgin, it's Richard Branson, you know, anything he touches, right? We, we are watching very closely. And so, I mean, I, I do think that, you know, um, even though the term personal branding can be a little bit icky for some people, um, even for me, I, I think that there is a smart thing thing and looking at that we each have our brand whether whether we want to call it a brand or not it's really reputation you know and it's how people know us if we don't in this day and age there's probably a problem and we need to define you know who we are and have a good representation of that online somehow so that people know we exist so that if we're going out and we're writing a book that the publisher knows that we have a, an audience that's built in that knows who we are. So I am glad to see, I just want to quickly say, um, I'm glad to see so many great uh, people who are new here and also some people that are old friends of ours that have been along uh, for the ride for a long time. So I'm really glad to, um, to welcome some new people here. I also want to get over to Elizabeth's question and that is this idea between what's the difference, if any, between personal brand and reputation? You know, I just said, you know, people have, you know, they have a reputation. They're they're known by, you know, for years and years. My um, grandfather would say that uh, a reputation takes years to build and a second to destroy. You know, and so that's definitely true. But I think that with uh, in my mind, maybe it's scope, you know, maybe personal brand goes beyond the reputation of people, how people who you're already connected to know you. And maybe it is a wider audience of people who may not have met you, but only know of you from your thought leadership, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, what are the thoughts over here? Let me catch up with what people are saying on the side. And I see Mike McCallan over here too, and Kate. I'm so glad to see you guys here. Yeah. So, so nowadays, I, I there are a lot of people that I that I have never actually met person to person. Uh, you know, Kiki, you you were an example before beforehand of of somebody that I met online, and then we got connected in different mm -hmm. ways face to face. And I think that the, the interesting part about about uh, what a what a personal brand is uh, is is that, that I I can I can never have even heard the voice or or seen a picture of of a specific uh, writer and th th I think this does go back a little bit uh, before uh, uh, online days as well there are people who who I have no connection to except for through their writing and their mm -hmm. reputation might be sketchy I don't I might not even realize that that one. There, there were a few writers that, as I was learning about these people, I was like, "Wow, okay, 
great writing, and then whoa, they had this the, this failing in, the, in in what they were they did after they wrote this. It's interesting to be able to to appreciate what the brand is, what the what the data and 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 expertise is without necessarily knowing uh, all of the backstory for uh, for an organization or for a person. So that, that a yeah. little bit of I I, I I think that that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's um, I love this conversation over here because you know um, one of the questions that that I you know brought up that um, earlier Elizabeth brought up here, and it is what happens when a person. So I'm going to go ahead and post this up here. Um, what happens when a person's brand maybe outshines or um, you know, is bigger than that that organ that person's organization that they work for, and that's something that is a real serious issue. Um, I think less now maybe than it used to be, but um, that is definitely something that I saw come up um, from time to time. Um, you know, where an organization they wanted their people to have a good relationship with their members, but they didn't want it to become that person's show. Like they didn't want that person to necessarily be the spokesperson. They just, you know, they wanted good member interaction, but they didn't want it to be, you know, um, some sort of critical thing if that person left the organization. Right. So what are we thinking about that? Well, uh, the, the, the separation of of a person from from a brand, I think, is something that we've seen almost going back uh, to to the early 20th century. If you remember, uh, what is now General Electric or GE, even it's not even General Electric anymore. Uh, General Electric got started as a co as two different companies. One of them was Edison Electric. And an Edison Electric got uh, got bought out uh, 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 combined with another company, and forgive me, I'm forgetting about about who who was his sort of counterpart. But then after after a while, their board, the board of the new General Electric, actually pushed Edison out, uh, and it, and it became so there was no longer Edison Electric; it was just General Electric. And I, and and mm. I think that one of the one of the the primary uh, uh, focuses for uh, for any organization uh, is to understand what what its reason for being is. It certainly is mm -hmm. a, a good successful company or association is not based on one person. It is based on on ideals, on on, on values, on, on on advocacy, on uh, on, on growth of, of the individuals. So. Uh, Right. It's it's not just them. I think that there's there's a number of people who have been the sort of the executives for a company, and and they've had to kind of put uh, be pushed to the side for whatever reason it is. Uh, so uh, I, I could num name a, a dozen of them probably, in the, uh, but I won't. The the sense is that that I think that within our field, it has to be something where you do have a sense of. You know what happens? What happens if 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 Joe Schmo, who is the who is the the public face of the organization, God forbid, passes away? You know who is going to come mm -hmm. up behind that person? And if you don't have somebody who is uh, made known, then you could really have a a, a serious canyon that someone has to has to jump uh, as a result of maybe it's not even you know somebody somebody dying, but it, but maybe it's somebody who who just leaves the organization either in a huff or because they're, they're done. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we have two different, we have uh, two different situations, um, comments over here that I want to touch on. And so Kate is saying over here, I'm hit or miss on that. We had the similar issue in which our organization's Twitter account was tied to a person, but then they left. Also, it was confusing when multiple people had access or when our membership only associated the Twitter feed with her. You know, you can you can tweet correctly and be engaging as an organization. On the flip side, Holly brings up down here. Um, on the flip side, we have to remember that people and organizations also hire us for our brands. This is true for both traditional jobs and consultants. 
how would you be hired if you didn't have a brand? So, and, and John says, Martha Stewart brand company. She seems to be doing fine despite jail time. And it, <laughs> it's, it is true. Um, you know, that I, I guess, I guess we are always kind of at risk um, when we have somebody who is sort of uh, public facing and they are representing our brand, you know, um, or our organization's brand and they have their own personal brand and they decide to leave. We are kind of at risk, whether that person's on social media or whether that person is customer service, however they, however they engage, you know, uh, with the members that's that's always a risk and you're hoping that they're engaging and i mean i guess that's a high class problem to have right if you have somebody who's so popular with the members that you're concerned if they might leave um and on the other hand you know when someone's going when an organization is thinking about hiring someone you know if they look at somebody who has a strong personal brand and maybe has a built-in association audience you know, I've definitely run into this, you know, where it's like if you have a built in association audience, they think, oh, you know, that person's network is going to come with them and that's going to look, you know, nice for our organization. So, you know, I think that that's definitely something that can, you know, help you when you're looking for a new job, you know, if you've already got some thought leadership built in there. But it's it's, it's an interesting it's a sticking point, right? Well, what do you think is the is the major deterrence or the major uh, uh, negative that comes from having someone with a high uh, high value personal brand come and be involved with with an association or a company? Well, you know, I I, I think that um, Deirdre over here she actually brings up um, a great point. She's saying I can think of a few association execs who probably rose more quickly than others because they had strong brand, a strong brand through blogging or speaking or both, and it reflected their knowledge and personality. And I can think of some too. And I think that in lieu of of more years of experience, that if somebody is able to show thought leadership and show that you know they know a lot about what's going on in the industry that that can actually help them and definitely take them further than they would other than they would be able to go otherwise you know so you know we should we should think about it Ray says, worried about an individual with too strong a brand, then leaders need to foster multiple people developing their brand. Yes. And, you know, I was actually in preparing for today's session, today's chat. You know, I was looking at um, some different research that's been done. And, you know, this coaching organization um, had looked at companies that are investing more and more in leadership coaching and personal brand development for their leaders so that they can have multiple people who are constantly these strong individuals who are you know engaging with people and you know sort of intriguing people and bringing them further into the organization kiki just to back that up i think that it's an it's a it's a highly important educational principle that you do not have uh, uh, one main leader uh, of any organization. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know how many of you are Star Wars aficionados. Uh, uh, I know that I'm only partially. But the but the interesting thing about the villains in the Star Wars uh, series is that there's always one leader, and then there's one person behind them. Now and the problem is with that is that is that th these are the villains. The, they're called the Sith for anybody who cares. Um, uh, is it, they, so you've got the you've got the leader, and then you've got the person that 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 the leader is training. That's it. So, and what happens is yeah. that when the when the when when the, the the follower wants to become the leader, he kills the leader. He kills the leader. Okay, and then and then and then the, and then he needs to go out and find somebody else to lead. It's the, it's it, it it is it is a a defeatist principle. To, to be an educator who is afraid of their their students uh, surpassing them. Uh, I, I should be creating s such good leaders that the people who are coming after me feel free to, to teach 
and to multiply themselves. Uh, it, 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 the, the, I, I, I use this term a lot because I think that it is a, it is one of my business philosophies that a rising tide lifts all boats. And, and, and if, and a really a, a, a rising leader should lift all of his or her followers as well with her. And as a result, yes, you probably will have people who will go off and do their own thing. But, but that's because mm-hmm. you're doing a good job. It's not because you, 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 you're, oh goodness, we're not having client, uh, uh, perfect retention or whatever the case is. So uh, I think that, that the, the beauty of a, of a strong brand is that it, it, it actually fosters uh, many, many different uh, 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 strong leaders. And I think that you can look throughout almost every stage, uh, every industry, uh, in, whether it be sports, entertainment, or uh, any, any other place, you're going to probably find that the best leaders are people who, who, whose, whose followers went off and they were successful in other places. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And, and, um, you know, I think that that that's one thing that when I used to work with chapter leaders, um, I used to always for the leadership, leadership meetings, I used to really focus on that saying that the number one thing you do as a good incoming leader is look for the person who's replacing you. You know, you immediately have to be thinking, how can I develop things so that when it's time for me to move on, it's it's not unlike raising kids. You know, you are raising them so that one day they'll be independent of you so that they will be able to survive and thrive. You know, hopefully not, not you don't want to be away from them, but you want them to be okay if you're not there. And to do a good, and more than be okay, you want them to succeed and do well. And this is what we need to do with our organizations, you know. So, so how can we build a community around us of, of leaders who are able to not just survive, but thrive. Um, Deirdre asks over here, can anyone think of associations that have staff with strong personal brands working or advocating for them? Curious to know how that evolved and how they overcame leadership fears. And I immediately have a few people that are coming to mind, but I'm curious, I'm curious to hear what other people say. Um, and by the way, I want to remind everyone that if you feel, you know, uh, very strongly about any of this, or if you, you know, just feel somewhat strongly about it and have some ideas, jump in. We have an open seat. It's the hot seat and anyone and can join. If you're, if there are two people or even three people who want to get on, I will gladly give away my seat. <laughs> He can always come back. That's the beauty. That's the beauty. That's that's part of my personal yes. brand, is to is to is to, uh-huh. is to is to is to lead people and then get out of the way. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think okay, John. Like, there's John Rico and his his organization, Mark Dorsey. You know, um, there's uh, Peter O'Neill. You know, and it's. These are people who have very strong personal brands, independent even of their associations in the association industry. You know, you would know, you know them and their association, um, but if they move from one association to another, you're very aware of it. You you know them even better than you sometimes know their, their organization. Well, isn't that the way that it should be? Uh, I think that you should always have a personal a face, a, a human face to any group. Uh, if if that if if it's monolithic, if it it is, uh, what what kind of a per what kind of an organization doesn't have uh, that's successful does not have a human face? I think that uh, you, you maybe what what you think of maybe maybe uh, something like a McDonald's. Or, or, but, but even that, you, 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 you think of maybe not the person, but you think of the, the attire, the, the uniform, and then you expect the person who's in that uniform to act in accordance with what you've had in uh, a connection with in the past. So I, uh, wow, I, I, I don't know that there, that brands and, and, and people can be, can, can be completely separated. Uh, You certainly will see. Uh, some machines doing a lot of uh, uh, of our work nowadays, whether it be the, the the Apple computer that I'm using right now or whatever the case is. But still, there is a person there. 
there is there is somebody who's doing something and speaking specifically to a uh, uh, staff that w was uh, that has a strong personal brand but also uh, an association advocating for them I, I, wow the, the majority of my clients the the, the clients of of uh, of of my uh, my employer, Higher, Higher Logic, we we do have a lot of really strong personalities, but the best of those associations with which we work are also people that that there might be there's a point person, there's certainly a quarterback, but then but then there are other people who are coming behind him or her, that, who are also able to kind of shine a little bit, and I think that it, as a result of that, if if the quarterback needs to move move off, then then over time that they'll be able to say well you know this this association is still a, a vital part of my life even though even though uh uh you know the 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 grandfather of the industry or 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 the 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 young buck who who has gone on to do something else that they they there's that the organization still has value and if it doesn't if it isn't the case then you have you have a potentially sick association a sick company and, you, and I don't I, I, that's not what anybody wants right right well there's okay so there are some really good questions and conversation happening and I want to comment on that and that is you know um, what happens if if the person is building up this brand and it's all personality and no work to show for it there's there's nothing behind it and uh, you know, Deirdre's like, yeah, where's the beef, Elizabeth? Elizabeth says exactly. So um, we do know some people that are like that, uh, you know, out there in the association space, and it's kind of like, you know, they are uh, they have large personalities, but you know, where's the work that they've done? Where's the work that they've produced? Where are you know? have they earned their stripes basically, or are they just writing their personal brand? And so that's kind of an interesting situation. And if that person with the larger than life personality is coming up against you for a job and you may have all of this experience, but they have the personality, you know, that's their personal brand that doesn't may or may not have, you know, anything to back it up. Um, what does that mean? You know, and how do you sort of, how do you, how do you deal with that? How do you navigate that? Well, I don't, I, I think that, I think that two things, if somebody, if an organization with which you work values thought leadership, uh, then, then I think that it just makes sense that that that, that person, a person with thought leadership, will come to, the, will, will will have an opportunity to grow and and to, and to have more uh, real world leadership, if not just thought leadership. So, if yeah. if a if a if a newbie or somebody who doesn't have the same uh, ability to communicate online or in print or face to face, if that person doesn't isn't able to succeed or, or, or stand up, then it just means that the value of what that person without the thought, thought leadership provides is not necessarily, um, is not necessarily understood by, by the space in which you're, you're growing. So it may be a good idea for you to go someplace else and, and, and see some success yeah. someplace else. What do you think, uh, uh, Kiki? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that, um, you know, in response to that whole situation of, you know, are they providing value? Are they really providing value? And what are they bringing to the organization? If um, if that's sort of a shallow thing, I, I like Ray's response here saying that if we see through their brand, they have a weak brand because they may have no foundation. And Elizabeth says, I I'd like to think that's the case, but I'm not so sure that's what really happens. And I don't know either. I think that probably, I would like to think that most of the time that that stuff kind of um, shines through, that you're able to like really look where is, the, you know, where's the beef and with a good interview process that you would uncover whether someone is really um, adequately prepared for a position or not. That said, I don't know. I don't know if the if the shiny 
veneer of having a, a fancy personal brand, you know, wins in the end sometimes. I don't know. Um, Elizabeth says, and I think that's the danger in the concept of personal brand. It is, or at least can be, a pretty shallow thing. I'm personally much more comfortable with the concept of reputation. Interesting. And and Kate says, Caitlin says, I disagree. I, uh, I associate personal brand with professional development, working hard to dive into your industry. And I do think that that's where language comes in. Um, you know, the language that we use in talking about this and actually, you know, will harken back to John Rico's question. How do folks reasonably go about the effort that goes into building a personal brand? Some seem to put more into promoting their work product than they do in the product itself. And so, so yeah, semantics. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, if we agree, if we can agree that, um, that developing one's personal brand, developing your personal brand, brand is, is something that's important for us today, um, and I think that we do see that, you know, having certainly having a professional online presence is very important for all of us. Um, how do you go about building that personal brand? What do you please, do? please? We need some people here. We really do. Um, <laughs> He's sick of hearing me well, talk, I guys. Think the people, uh, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the, the, the 21 uh, uh, high fives that I've gotten or high tens or whatever you want to call these, the, the, the props. Yeah. But, but Perhaps. but I think yeah. that he, here's here's the problem. We we are we are uh, normally selfish people. Mm. We are normally looking for the spotlight. At least at least among us, look we're 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 folks that are trying to to build uh, a, a, an a, a, an association. That, that needs to have a public presence, whatever the case may be. Now, that, now, certainly, I know a lot of folks who don't want the spotlight, but still, there is a sense that they want to be able to be successful. They want to 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 have a, a measure of, of of peace that comes from from that success. So, uh, mm -hmm. here's the here's the thing that we have to struggle through. What do we mean when when we're trying to reach out and and do well for ourselves, for for our employers, for our friends, for our colleagues, is it something where we're where where we are are attempting to to be the king on the hill, the queen on the hill, or are 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 we doing something where we're trying to 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 build something together with, with with other folks. If we are not building together mm -hmm. with other folks, if we are not allowing for for people to share some of that spotlight with us, or for us to be in the background so that other people can be in the spotlight, then I think that we have a serious problem with what it, whatever you want to call it, personal brand, uh, ego, yeah. whatever the case is. Yeah. So uh, one of the I think some of the most powerful organizations that have ever been out there have not had a, a, the the name of their founder in, in in what they were doing, and as a, and as a result of of successful succession plans, have been able to say, okay, this is my time frame. I'm going to be successful here, and I want to leave whatever organization that, with which I'm working at a better place than when I came in, and with with the mm -hmm. likelihood that they're going to be able to grow on top of this. Uh, if if your personal brand uh, is taken away from from an organization and it plummets, then you've you, you, how can you possibly? I don't think that I don't I don't consider that success. Uh, so it, especially in a, it, when when we need to grow together. Yeah, you know, I I think that you really something you touched on there is that um, it's this question of value, and I think that kind of plays into um, the discussion that's happening over here. Um, you know, I think that personal brands, sometimes what, what can make it a little disconcerting is that people are so focused on maybe developing their personal brand that they're thinking not on how am I providing value to my audience or how am I providing value to our members, but how, you know, how am I going to make money? 
or how am I going to, you know, advance further in, in my career or even how am I going to get more people to just pay attention to what I say, even if I'm not sure that I have anything important to say at all. Um, I, I think that that is, is really where there's sort of a dividing line and we need to make sure that everyone's on the side of focusing on how am I providing value, whether it's if I meet you at a networking event and I'm building my personal brand that way and I am Kiki and hi and you remember me and maybe not necessarily the organization I work with. Or if you run into me as representing my organization online and you know me as, you know, Kiki from Comcast or Kiki from, you know, AARP or, or whatever. And I'm building thought leadership as, you know, as Kiki and still connected to that organization, you know, how am I providing value? That should be the focus always, right? Deirdre, uh, so, really, really, uh, I think hit hit it here with the, uh, the difference in at least in the discussion that we're trying to uh, trying to express the 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 reputation happens whether you like it or not personal brand is yeah. intentional uh if look uh, my my primary business before i came to the work that i'm doing right now is in marketing uh i i <laughs> Oh goodness! Uh, my re the reputation of the uh, of the company for uh, my m my reputation hopefully preceded me and it was and it was good, but but that didn't necessarily uh, always agree with the copy that I was putting out in in, in pre presenting the, uh, the 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 for for myself and for and for my clients. Here's an example. I used to I worked for a trade show one time. And I was told, okay, we're gonna we're we're mixing it up. We're we're gonna improve this event. This is gonna be great. And we we went through some things, and I and I had the 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 three or four things that I that I, I knew I could say to people, and this is the reason that we're gonna be more successful. So I, I the the show occurred, and and I went back to some of the folks who had exhibited there. Some of the folks who had exhibited there because I had told them that there was going to be a difference in the in the event, and the, and I said, "So how did the event go for you?" And they and they said it was horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> Why was it horrible? What? Well, well, everything that you said, you know, that that there were these three or four things that were sort of happening, but the people didn't come that we needed to be there. It's like this, and that's what we were trying to trying to trying to uh, change. So, so as a result of of the. Uh, the 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 marketing copy not 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 uh, being exactly what the reputation was uh, that event actually combined with another event in the future and it and it, and it doesn't exist anymore so um, that is to say that that's not one of my uh, 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 big success stories that I've had in my entire life but at the same time I think that what that does is it actually it, it shows the difference between branding which can be fluff sadly. And the reputation, which I think will will be much more longstanding. Yeah, I you know that's such a that's, that's an interesting story, and it's a great example. And um, I just really want to to point out, it's obvious that Deirdre is a paid writer that she gets paid to write because this was awesome. But um, here's something to chew on: a reputation happens whether you like it or not. A personal brand is intentional. Isn't that awesome? I just love that. And and I am willing to pay to send her a webcam so that she can jump on and join us at some Please. point. <laughs> I think that would be awesome. Um, and Rebecca, so Rebecca's on here and Holly's on here and Elizabeth is on here. And I want to say that um, you guys, um, all of these people are great people to follow. If you're not following them on Blab and Twitter and elsewhere, definitely follow them. Um, we actually have um, different, uh, they're gonna be guests on uh, association chat in the coming weeks and so at different times. And so I'll, I'll you know, pitch you on, on some of the upcoming uh, Blab topics that we have coming up at the end. But I just wanted to make sure that while you're scrolling through here and you see these, these great nuggets of wisdom, um, you know, click on their name, follow them on Blab. Hopefully they'll put on their own Blabs at some point and follow them on Twitter yes. because they all have great, great content. And that's the cool thing about Blab is that almost, I don't know of anybody who's, whose name on Twitter is not the same on Blab. 
Yeah, they're, I mean, they're connected. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Rebecca A. Church says, I actually know people who have left positions because the values brand of their organization didn't align with their own personal brand. Yeah, yeah me yeah, too. You better, you, me better, too. you better be willing to do it or, or, or that reputation of yours, your personal brand will mean a lot less to a significant amount of people who, who really trust you. Uh, I, I, yeah. I cannot sell anything that I don't believe in. And if mm -hmm. you do, then, mm -hmm. then, then your, your integrity will, will, will diminish. And, and as a result, the people who know you, the people who should actually feel very happy to be able to, to, to promote your personal brand will, will, will stop. Yes. Yes. Deirdre says, but I ghostwrite, so my writing doesn't always help my personal brand. Ah, um, but if you follow her, um, have you been, she has a, a food blog that is really great and it maybe doesn't tie into her professional writing stuff, but she's she's awesome at that too. So you need to, to follow that. And that's definitely staying authentic with who she is. Um, Elizabeth says, something I work on with clients, you don't determine um, or own your brand, your audience does. Uh, so that's that's pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. And it doesn't matter what you think about yourself or your organization. What matters is what your audiences think of you and what their experience of you is. Very true. Look, perception is 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 a significant part of reality. And 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 mm -hmm. I think that as I've I've grown to the place where I where I am. I I've moved away from the the petulant child that I was to a place where I begin to understand that I don't, it doesn't matter whether or not somebody thinks uh, uh, it, it doesn't matter whether or not I think I'm doing the right thing. If someone if someone yeah. it, it, who I trust is willing to come and say to me, "Look, you don't get it, but people are seeing you in X way." Okay, well, I need to be, I, I need to accept that that is at least partially true for that person. So if I can if I can take a step back and say, yeah, okay, um, my perception, uh, the, their perception of me is something that I would like to change if it's bad. So I have to I have to look through through and find find that one percent of what they're saying that's correct. That nugget of gold in the right. in the dirt. Right. Yeah, you know, and and um, I didn't want to, you know, I the conversation carried us into a different direction. I didn't want to um, completely abandon this idea of where. So, what do you want to do? How do you build your personal brand? And so, if I could just step back there for a second, because um, for those people who are really working on, um, you know, what kind of resources do I need to develop? What do I need to do? To, to build this personal brand. I'm not sure if I have one. And if I have one, I'm not sure that it's that great. Um, I think that, um, you know, some of the things that I would suggest is, is and that I'm working on right now is making sure that I'm consistent. Um, and that is, I'm kind of, you know, I, I have been, even though I've known a lot of different people in the association community, I've been kind of inconsistent about, you know, my messaging on who I am, and what I'm doing, and what I'm looking for, and how people can interact with me, and and um, you know, I like to think that I'm fairly friendly, but I, I think that my messaging isn't consistent about you know the best ways to engage with me or how yeah. we can work together, and that's that's something I think if you have um, you know f strong feelings about or strong experiences that can help other people certainly thought leadership you know what can you write what can you put out there that other people can benefit from you know um what value can you provide in a conversation to the other person what kind of value can you provide through a blog post and so you know i've been trying to get a lot more clear about that and focusing less on on well, let's have fun and just try this, which has its own merits. But, you know, and I've been trying to, to um, focus more on what's going to help somebody else out, you know. And um, so I think that, that that's definitely something where it will help you 
to not only build your personal brand, but help you to be authentic in the way that you engage with people. And it'll be valuable to you ultimately too, because you'll be getting to a place where, you know, you have a meaningful exchange with other people. Uh, Adrian Bryant really uh, is challenging us here about what what Uh-oh. would each each person on here say, uh, today say is their personal brand. Okay, let's get to the point. Uh, I it's a uh, that that's it's certainly difficult to uh, to to cr- create that in 140 characters. It's well, it's you know, almost impossible. That I would say almost impossible. But I think that that for everyone. Uh, uh, some kind of a mission statement, at least what you hope your personal brand is, is, is something that would be very important for us to create. But then also, I think that it is something, uh, uh, Adrian, that that is probably best, at least confirmed by the people around us. You know, I, I really like that challenge. I think that it's, it's a smart one um, because with Adrian, it's like, you know, she's very active in the community. And and then on Association Trends, um, she was marked, it was like, you know, one of the top technology association influencers or something like that. Um, I, I mean, I'm getting the title wrong, I think, but it was something like that that came out like a couple months ago. And so is it tech influencer? Is it is her focus on building meaningful member engagement, which she does, is it, you know, what is it? And so, so that's a really good challenge. And I mean, even for me, you know, it's like, what am I willing to put myself out here and say, this is who I am. And of course, Elizabeth has an awesome example. She's like, here's the URL, here's the link to who I am and what I'm about. This is my personal brand. And, um, and so maybe we could take a page from literally a page from uh, Elizabeth's website and use that as a a sort of model for ourselves as, you know, how we define, you know, what our own personal brand is. I think, I think that the, this, the, the focus for me has got to be on the success of the people around me. I, when I call somebody on the phone, when I, when I get on here with, with, with you, Kiki, if I'm not actually helping Kiki, then the good news is that she can kick me off of here. But but the thing is that, that I think that we <laughs> we all need to be willing to to take the spotlight when when we should. But at the same time, I think that we it, I, yeah. I want to be willing to be forgotten. And the reason I say it that way, I want my personal brand to be a, a little bit less important than the success of the people around me. And and mm-hmm. if. And that's that, that. Maybe that's a part of my personal brand. I don't know, but I hope it is. But but I think it, but I think that the the focus needs to be on on our our long term goals. And if those long term goals are primarily for our own good, we're probably gonna gonna have some uh, some uh, some problems with our reputation uh, as a result of mm-hmm. that. So. I see Sarah over here. There's so much good stuff over here. And, and really I good um, chat. Really, really good connection. I know. Daniel, Daniel Tech Embrace, he um he actually brought up earlier a point and I didn't get a chance to to talk about. So I'm so glad that you chimed in here, um, Daniel. <clears throat> and he's saying, I think one of the difficult things about personal branding is that some people can talk, but not they're not able to write what's in their in their heads. And so, yeah, that's definitely a challenge. That's why I think that some of these different channels are sometimes really good. Certainly like, you know, people like Gary Vaynerchuk have benefited. Um, And yes, Daniel, if you want to jump on, there's an open seat. Um, But like uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, who is not, even though he has books now, um, he became known more by video because that's just the way he expresses himself better. Um, and Sarah says, and this is Sarah Lawler. Hey, Sarah, um, Director of Marketing and Communications, National Council of State Housing Agencies. See how important those bios and everything are on <laughs> Um I suspect that building a person, a personal brand is a deliberate process. I suspect so too. And in fact, you know, I mean, it's interesting, um, you know, this whole train of thought because 
knowing many of you on here, I can see where your personal brands have changed and, you know, Holly brings up and what it is now, your personal brand, what it is now may be different six months to a year from now. And I mean, I've seen that with, with her where she's always had a strong personal brand, but it's definitely evolved. It's, it's grown with her into different, you know, directions. And so, so yeah, um, this is awesome. If you guys, you know, we have a little bit of time if you want to jump on and if you have questions backslash Q and yeah, and ask your question. Seriously, I, I, I appreciate the props, but but you, you everybody else, I, we, we'd like to hear what you have to say a little bit more than I, I, I'm, I'm going to make that my personal brand. You are hopefully successful as a result of listening to this. But uh, and, and if you have a specific <laughs> question, see, the, the thing that, that I think is important here for for all of us who are listening is that we have mm -hmm. a responsibility within associations to be concerned about our peers. And what is the beauty of being on an, uh, on a chat like this is that is that we we have a response. We have the op same kind of opportunity. We have the, the the ability to 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 help each other grow, and um, the, I so 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 our personal brand, our reputation, is something that we're trying to grow. Try, but the reason that we're trying to the way that we're trying to grow it, excuse me, is by helping other people. Oh, um, the little head. So Deirdre says not to. I'm sorry, this is totally a non sequitur. But um, Deirdre says I see a little head popping up in Eric's window. I think it's Daniel's. Does that mean he's trying to call in? No. If Daniel were trying to call in, he'd be able to click on the open seat and call in that way. Is, what he's doing is he's giving props. And if you if you linger over the little hands over there, it's like you're giving little little props like hey hey I like what you're saying like okay so Eric is beating me now and now has 30 props to my 26 somebody give her 100 whatever I don't need it that's fine I see how it is um <laughs> thanks guys thank you you you, you asked for um, that I know I really, did I I'm totally not, did I don't need I the totally props did. really no, I know I don't haha <laughs> so um so yeah that's the way you can have a little fun and engage and actually, this is fun. I, I posted a tweet earlier today and said, I wish and I and I, you know, I wish that there were a way to live poll people in my blab, you know, so that I'd be able to to, you know, get a response. And I, you know, went ahead and let blab know. And they responded by saying that the founder and they gave me like his little a handle that the founder may be granting my wishes soon. So <laughs> I am very excited about that. So, so got, uh, pretty soon I'll be able to pull you guys at behind the, the scenes trying to, uh, who, uh, I know <laughs> it's very cool. They have patient. a great, we, we will, we will talk to the founder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's so. slightly scary. Oh, <laughs> and Daniel says, I would jump in, but the wife is busy in the sitting room with her soaps. Yeah, well, we wouldn't want to interfere with that for <laughs> sure. So you got to keep, you know, happy wife, happy home. Um, so Elizabeth says, oh, no, Holly says that will be fun to watch you dance with that. Do people uh, do business with your business or with you as solopreneurs, entrepreneurs? It's an interesting line. As my business evolved, I learned people wanted more me, less corporate, and I divested from my corporate brand in 2015 as a result. Glad to know this is working and, for you. And let, let yeah, me actually speak to, 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 to Holly. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, am, I, am I? Yeah, Holly. Um, uh -huh. So there was a company for which I worked that um, started off with one name and it became the name of the founder. The, the, it became obvious that that we were tr trying to build a company that did not focus on personal brand. And then what we did was mm -hmm. we, 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 we moved it over to the place where it was the personal brand of the founder. And the, the, the benefit of that was that we were able to, to, to build something that was going to keep my, the founder uh, in, in, a, in a place of, of 
you know, somewhat uh, security in some ways, but also helping to, to build something that would uh, uh, that would be long term for 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 him. It, this, again, the struggle for us as as solopreneurs, and as you said, and entrepreneurs, is is to be able to understand that we're we're trying to build something of value, but when we're gone. Uh, what, what's the what's that value going to be? Now, mind you, look at this. The reality is that 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 Ford Motor Company was named after its founder, and Ford is long gone. Mm-hmm. And uh, in most places, I, th- I think that that one of their one of his relatives might be uh, in in in, a, in, a, in the chairman of the board slot or something like that. But the, the sense is that the success of that company. Uh, go, uh, lasted long beyond uh, the the founder. So, uh, uh, if we can build a brand of some value like Ford, then I think that we would all be very happy. Um, you know, certainly there's no Mister AARP, there's no Ms. AARP, but but still that brand it was. If, if we looked into it a little bit, we would probably see some people that are that were in the highest levels that that had a significant level of of a reputation. So. Yeah. Um, Kiki, did we lose your face? Uh, I don't know. Can you hear me? See me? I can. I can. I can hear you. So we've got mm-hmm. a we've got a, a Reggie Henry situation. Uh, uh, if for those of you who have been here for a little while, we had Reggie on. Oh wait, Deirdre uh, sees uh, me. Elizabeth oh, see, sees me. Mm-mm, Eric, oh. you're not getting away with this one. No, no. <laughs> it's your tech problem, not mine. Okay. Um, I just want to, uh, guess, since it's 2.57 Eastern time, I'm having a great time with this chat. Um, but anyway, uh, I want to say that if you are loving what you're hearing from Miss Elizabeth Weaver Ingle, who is, she's phenomenal in all kinds of ways. You want to continue learning from her. You definitely don't want to miss when she guest hosts uh, on Blab and joins association chat to talk about lean startup methodology. And um, I so wish, I so, oh, thank you, Elizabeth. I so wish that um, you could jump on here and actually, you know, do a little pitch for, for people. But let me just tell you guys, you know, the white paper is awesome. You can go over to Spark. Um, Spark Consulting is her business. You can go over to Spark and you can download the white paper ahead of time. It is really good. And I don't give like empty praise for things. Um, It's really good. And I actually took a lot away, took a lot of notes on things that I can apply to what I'm doing. But I think anyone whether you're working for an association or you serve associations in whatever capacity, you can learn from both from what they're teaching us about uh, lean startup methodology and the rest of it, how it applies to associations. And they have great case studies in there and you you definitely want to check it out. Um, Is that next week? And yeah, I think that's, that's coming up. Yeah. That's the one next week. And so, um, we are really, really excited about it because it's it's Elizabeth and it's Guillermo, and I keep uh, mispronouncing his last name. I'm pretty sure uh, Ortiz de Zarat, Zarate, Zarate, right? Um, something like that. Um, anyway, I I trust me, it will be really, really good. Um, so it's next week. We just, we just call him Guillermo. 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 I love that name. Um, I can't say the last the last name very well. Or so anyway, hopefully I'll I'll get better about it. Okay. Hey, hey, uh, Elizabeth he did us one better and just we'll call him G. Yo G. <laughs> I don't know if that I can, I don't know if I can pull that one off, but um, I can't really pull off Guillermo either. So whatever. Guillermo del Toro is another one. Guillermo Let's just throw out all the Guillermos we know. <laughs> Um, I met a Guillermo at uh, the idea swap last week and he came in and he said, um, Oh, it's great to meet you. And I'm Guillermo. And I was like, oh, are you that Guillermo? And he goes, I'm a Guillermo. I, <laughs> it, it wasn't, it wasn't that Guillermo, but it was a nice moment for me. All right. So I digress, Eric, you guys, this has been wonderful. It's been another great chat. Oh, um, 
really, really happy to have everyone here. I know next week is going to be phenomenal. And um, in the meantime, if you're in the DC area, there is a gathering tonight. There is um, an association gathering at Blackfin that starts at 530. I don't think I'm going to be able to get there until 6 p.m. because I have my daughter with me and we're going to be visiting DC's first cat cafe right before that. And what? so so we're going to leave from the cat cafe called Crumbs and Whiskers and we're going to head over to Blackfin for an association gathering um, of association professionals. All are welcome. Yeah, you didn't need to RSVP beforehand, but if you want to swing by, swing by. There should be some good people there. And, um, and here's some good news for everybody who's going to that. I am not going. Uh, so as a result, if you go, you'll be able to enjoy yourself with Kiki and you won't have to listen to me. Oh, stop, stop. You should be there, Eric. It's terrible. I really would like to be there, but, but I, I have a, I have some work to do this evening. So, uh, 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 I, I, I look forward to the next time when I will be able to see you all and kidding aside, I would, it, uh, I, I look forward to connecting with all those nice folks who are, who are over here. And seriously, we do appreciate, you you putting something into the chat uh, it, mm -hmm. even if you don't get into the uh, into the open seat here we we understand that we were uh, a, a twitter chat for many years uh, uh when i say we i actually mean kiki because she was the one who actually did most of it beforehand um but but the reality is that we have we have honest interaction we're we're we're, we're building together uh this this uh this interaction is very, very helpful. So fantastic. Yes. So I just posted the link uh, for the meetup over in the side. And uh, DC by the Association Networking Group, Happy 2016 Happy Hour. It is actually tonight. And you can RSVP there if you want to, or you can swing by. 5.30 p.m. is when it starts. Um, and I think it goes to seven. And so it's a good chance to see people. If you follow the link, you'll be able to see other people who have RSVP'd already. So you can kind of, you know, make your plan on if you just have to be there, if that person you've been wanting to connect to is there. Um, but until next time, I hope that all of you do an extremely, you know, phenomenal job in working on your personal brands and that you have a phenomenal week. Think about providing value to others and come back next time so that we can talk to Elizabeth and Guillermo and learn all about lean startup methodology for associations. Yay. That's it. That's it. Fantastic right, guys, guys and ladies. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right. Thank you.